my believers. I'm looking for the redeemed ones who will come to me and ask me and I'll show them how to tap into the heavenly place and I'll give them peace unspeakable and full of glory. Somebody ought to praise God up in here today. We got to learn how to pray. Learn how to pray. Listen, let me say this because you know when you read the Bible you have to understand that there are, uh, if you don't read it in the whole context, you understand, it just seems like some verses are contradictory. Some, some scriptures in the Bible you read, it says, the ways of God are mysterious. They are past finding out. Other scriptures you could read, and there's a couple that I want to throw up, uh, Sherry, if we may. Um, it could be, uh, let's see here, Isaiah 52 is one of them. Uh, let's look at that, Isaiah 52. I'm sorry, Isaiah 2 and 3 and Isaiah 58 and 2. Those two scriptures there, which really sort of contradicts the one that says his ways are past finding out. Um, his ways are mysterious. Um, this one, Isaiah 2, many people shall go and come and say, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God, and he will teach us his ways. And walk in his ways. He will teach us his ways. Isaiah uh, 58 and 2, I believe. And they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. You know. We don't. Here's, here's the balance. We don't understand everything about God. There are some of his ways that we do not understand. That is, it's the who, what, when, how. I'm going to suggest to you that most of the mysteriousness about it lies in the how and the when. But the what is not that mysterious. What he will do is not as mysterious as when he will do it. Can I talk a while here? And who he will do it for, come on, is not as mysterious as when he will do it. I don't know how. I don't know how. Some of you are seeking God for something right now. You don't know how he's going to do it. It's past your finding out. And you don't know really when he's going to do it. I feel God in here. You don't know when. I know you'd rather it to be this afternoon, but the truth of the matter is you don't know how and you don't know when. But what he will do is not all that mysterious. And who he'll do it for is not all that mysterious. Because my Bible tells me that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but believe that those things which he said shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he said and whatsoever thing you desire when you pray believe that you receive them and you shall have them whosoever so look God, God's got a lot of history on, on who he'll do it for because he's no respect a person. If he did it for one, he'll do it for another. Somebody give him praise. So, and what he will do, it's not all that mysterious. Sometimes we have not because we ask not. I'm learning that. I'm learning that. I'm learning that. I'm learning that. Some things have not come into your life because you simply not prayed for it. You've not got in and prayed for it. 
Because when you learn how the, the value of prayer and say, Lord, teach me how to pray, I want a certain place, a certain time, and I need a certain pattern. So you're not just praying any old thing out of your flesh, that you're praying in a certain pattern. He gave them the pattern. He, they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. We know where your power come from. And when you pray, it's similarly, the Heavenly Father is answering your prayer. He's listening to you. Somebody give God some praise up in here. Teach us to pray. Well, I've got a certain place that I pray in. There's a certain time that I carve out. I'm almost finished here today. Prayer is not a sidebar. It's not if I can fit it in. If it happens to creep into my day or what have you, then I will take advantage of it. But I don't have a set time. And I don't have a certain pattern. I just fling it out there. I come in my prayer closet or whatever I go, and I just shoot a shotgun. Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. It's a prayer he will always answer. Tell somebody he will always answer that prayer. It's 100% guaranteed. Come on, and he won't wait next month. He'll start teaching you today. He'll start teaching you right now if you learn how to pray and just open that Bible and say, God, I'm getting in this word. Somebody need to get in the word and take that word to your prayer closet. Too many Christians are tied up, tangled up in the things of God. Slow down, preacher, slow down. Romans 12, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you would present your bodies as a living sacrifice. When you come before God, you got to bring something. You got to bring your heart. You can't come to your prayer closet dragging a whole lot of junk. The first thing you got to do is build an altar and ask God to cleanse your heart. Mm -hmm. Come on, you can't, you can't be out there hanging around on the fringes. You can't rock in the club. And then come to church on Sunday morning. Come on, you can't be out there on the fringes on Monday, Tuesday, Friday night, Saturday night. You know, I used, I used to say that, and I said, yeah, people don't do that. In, in come, yes, they do. Some of those movies you go to. I don't see how you take the Holy Ghost to some of those movies you go to. Do you put him to sleep? What do you do? Do you put him to sleep? Do you leave him in the car? What do you do with the Holy Ghost when you go to some of these movies that you go to? Where is God? Those two hours, where is God in your life? Where is your salvation? Where is the Holy Ghost? I feel God up in here. How in the world can you take him into a filthy movie like that? Mm -hmm. When you pray, when you pray, when you pray, God, open your eyes. Seek you, brethren, by the mercies of God. Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and accept only God, which is your reason for serving. And be ye not, be ye not conform. Be ye not conform. Come on, say it. Conform, not conform. Conform. 
you, you still need a longer gap in there. Conform. Don't be con into adapting to this. Be not fake form, misform. Some of y'all are misformed. You are fake form. You are conform. When you get saved, you have to renew your mind. Because this world will con. You wonder why you don't have power. You wonder why you, you when things happen, you wonder why you fall apart. You wonder why you can't stick and stay. You wonder why somebody else can go through something, they'll stand still, stand fast, and you wonder why you fall apart. Why? One is in your mind. Be ye not conformed, but be ye. That, that means trans. It means to transport. It means to move. It, it, it means to, 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 to move. It means to progressiveness. Don't be con into thinking that you can have a carnal mind and get into the things of God. Can I talk for a little while here? Some of y'all been duped. You have been con. The devil is just like Madoff. He has con you and thinking that you can get into God that you can come on in your carnality you can tap into the things of the spirit you, you got to be transformed you got to move forward move forward you got to grow that's what I'm talking about grow 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 the devil is a liar Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, mood, mood forward. You know, we got to learn how, and I'm going to close, learn how to trust God. You know, when God renews your mind, when you get in the word and learn how to pray, he'll open your eyes and, and you can get an intimacy with God that I don't care what storms come. You can stand firm and stand fast and say, my God is able. And according to the word, I don't know when he's going to do it. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I know, I believe he'll do it for me. I believe he'll do it for me. I'm his child. You got to learn how to, some of y'all just trust God sometimes. You don't trust God all the time. You trust him sometimes. It depends on what it is that's facing you. But I believe it's Psalm 62. Psalm 62. Let's see what it says. I'm about to get out of here. I'm about to get don't be con up here. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. I shall not be greatly moved. That's some things facing you. You're going to have to decide what you're going to do. Three, how long will ye imagine mischief against a man, and ye shall be slain of all of you? As a bowing wall shall ye be as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellence. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Selah. 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 Selah is different from amen. Amen means so be it. Amen means that what has been said or what has been spoken, amen, so be it. Selah means pause. Stop. Think about what has been said. Slow down and think about it. Selah. Selah. Uh-huh. My soul waited up thou only upon God, for, he, for my expectation is from him. Uh-huh. He only is my...